Houses are getting too expensive. Maybe it's time to start renting. What's up everyone? My name is Joris. Welcome back to my finance channel. With housing prices here in Belgium on the rise for several decades now and no clear indications that they will go down anytime soon, it might be time to leave the idea of buying a home altogether and just start renting your place. Owning a home in Belgium is getting more and more expensive and often people are misconceived about the actual costs of home ownership. People buy a house and they will look at the sale price. They will calculate their mortgage payment costs and maybe sometimes even factor in the utility costs every month just to see if everything fits their budget. But they are blindsided to the bigger picture. Here in Belgium, we have always had the idea of buying your own home and living in it for years on out. But in the last few decades, we can see a decline in home ownership, in home ownership's percentages, in favor of the renter percentages. More and more people are renting their place, while less and less people are buying. Why is that so? Let's look into it. But first, hit the like button and the subscribe button if you have not done that already. If we look at the hard numbers and compare them to other European countries, we still have a lot more owners than renters. This is because our tax system allows us to buy more houses and rent them out at very marginal tax brackets. Most of the rental income here in Belgium is very little taxed. In major cities like Brussels, Antwerp, Ghent, the tax bracket on rental income is around 5 to 12%, depending on the city and depending on the cadastral income of your property. Cadastral income is a basic number to calculate the main tax on rental income. This way of taxing properties is extremely outdated. It works with potential rental income from 1975 and the current tax brackets are just built up on those old rules. Every few years or so there are talks about abolishing these rules and taxing properties in another way but nothing has happened yet and the rules won't change very soon either. A lot of people are retired and count on the rental income of their properties to survive. Others can only afford their properties because the rental income pays for the mortgages and if that rental income is now taxed, they won't be able to pay off those mortgages. In short, a change in taxation in properties will most likely crush the housing market. The Belgian housing market is said to be overvalued by 6 to 12%, but it still keeps up with the prices of other European countries. So our homes are not per se more expensive than other homes, but it's just an overall rise in price in Europe. Anyway, apart from the cadastral income tax, there are no real taxes you have to consider. However, there are a lot of other costs that people often forget when they are buying a house. Costs like utilities, upkeep, insurances, trash pickup, garden upkeep and so on. People often take out loans that only just fit their budget and then they have to pay all those extra costs resulting in having to spend more than they initially bargained for. If you buy a property worth 250,000 euros as, a, as your first property without any down payment, you will be paying 15,000 euros in taxes, in registration fees. You will be paying 10,000 euros in legal and notary fees as well and then you will be paying 1,000 euros as a mortgage payment every month for the next 25 years. The alternative of course is renting a place. Here you are sure what you have to pay every month, no hidden costs and you won't have to worry about the upkeep or problems arising with the property since all this is the responsibility of the landlord. He has to take care of major improvements and the upkeep of the property. More and more people now are considering renting instead of buying and I can understand why really. Because that same place of 250,000 euros can be rented out for 750 euros a month plus utilities. When you're buying a property you're effectively putting down a lot of money up front and after that you will have 20 to 25 years of mortgage to pay down on the property and you will have all extra costs like upkeep, insurances and taxes. Renting is easy, you know your monthly price up front and only the utilities are variable costs. But these costs are the same as if you were buying anyway. People often say, but renting is just throwing money out of the window and when you have a property you can always resell it later. While this is certainly true, renting might still be preferable due to its flexibility. 
You can move places every time your rental lease is expiring, meaning that you are not locked into one specific place at a time. Furthermore, when you are renting, you are not responsible for any major fixes on the house. Major fixes like a new roof or like new insulation, so you don't have to worry about these costs. It's all the landlord's problem. If we consider the same property as before of 250,000 euros, the buyer will have to put down 25,000 euros before the acquisition, and then he has to pay 1,000 euros monthly in the mortgage. Add another 150 euros in utilities and around 350 euros per month in taxes, insurance, upkeep and overall costs. Those are yearly costs, but they are calculated over time. Around 1.5% of the value of the property is in costs for the homeowner. That's 25,000 euros upfront and 1,500 euros per month. That's quite a lot for a young couple, let alone a single person. Of course, you can lower your monthly payments by putting more money down at the start, but saving up for a higher upfront cost will only take more time. The alternative, of course, is renting. For 750 euros a month, utilities 150 euros a month and the renter's insurance often less than 25 euros a month. There are no real upfront costs unless the landlord asks you a two to three month security deposit. And let's take three months. It was recently changed to a maximum of three months. So that's 2,250 euros upfront plus 925 euros per month. So the financial difference between buying and renting here in Belgium is the upfront costs of 25,000 euros for the buyer compared to 2,250 euros for the renter. You have your monthly costs of 1,500 euros compared to 925 euros. Add in the flexibility of the renting and you might just be better off switching over from buying to renting. Since you are paying a lot less when you are renting, especially considering the upfront costs, you might want to decide to invest the money instead. People often say if you buy a house, you're really only paying the interest. The principal is paid off and the value of the house will continue to grow. This is true, but you have to pay that much more for owning a place and it might not be worth it. To me, the real decision maker here is what the future will bring. For the buyer who paid a lot more every month and a lot more in front, the house will be paid off in 25 years. It will be paid off in full. The house itself, if it follows a 2% value growth every year, it will be worth around 410,000 euros at that time. This money is illiquid, however. The owner cannot sell his house because he will need a place to stay. But on the other hand, after 25 years, he will have a free place to stay for the rest of their days. The renter, on the other hand, who paid 575 euros less every month, can invest the money in the stock market, pursuing a 5% net annual return. This only happens in a perfect world, since very few people will actually put away the difference between owning and renting a house every month. Most likely, most will just spend the difference. But for this example, let's just take the perfect investor. 575 euros invested every month for the same 25 years with an average yearly return of 5% net results in a portfolio of 340,000 euros. But in contrast to the owner, this 340,000 euros is liquid and it can be sold and used. Of course, the major difference at this point is that the owner has a place that is fully paid off. So he can essentially live for free and he only has to pay the recurring costs like taxes, utilities and upkeep. The renter, on the other hand, has 340,000 euros to his name, but he still has no place of his own. He will have to continue renting in the future. Of course, I haven't taken into account the lump sum of money that the buyer is putting towards the house, the 25,000 euros. The renter obviously can also invest his 25,000 euros, but for the sake of the example, we're assuming a renter can't put down this 25,000 euros and that's why I'm not counting it here in the calculations. Another major topic that is often not pointed out in a comparison like this one is the evolution of the payments over those 25 years. The payments on your home, your mortgage payments, they are set in stone. They are fixed from the start and they will never 
increase, they will always stay the same over those 25 years. And even if you have a variable interest rate, the maximum payment can be calculated from day one out. The renter, on the other hand, will see his rent increase every year with a few percent. This means that even if his rent only raises by 1% every year, in the last few years he will be paying over 950 euros per month. And that's almost as high as the 1000 euros the buyer has to pay off. To conclude, there is no real up or downside of buying versus renting here in Belgium, at least not for the moment with current taxes and housing prices. Yes, housing prices are high, but they are still quite affordable compared to renting. If you want to be flexible, start out renting. Don't buy a house if you're not sure if you're staying there for a long while. But do buy a house if you are sure you are in the right location. Because then you can lock down those monthly housing costs. And after 20 to 25 years, your house will be paid off in full. And a lot more money can be spent every month on whatever you want. The only downside I can see for buying at the moment is the big upfront costs, the higher monthly payment and the stress that comes with owning a home. But if you're fine with all of this and you have saved up quite a lot of money, do consider buying a house. If you are not comfortable, however, with putting down that much money in one time and you want to move around a lot and maybe travel abroad or even live abroad for a few years, well, there is no real reason to buy at the moment. In that case, just find a good place to rent and be sure to invest as much money as you can. After a few years of renting, you can then decide to buy a house after all with the money you have saved up and invested, making the step towards home ownership a lot smaller. However, what I can see nowadays is that our Belgian youth often decides to rent instead of buy. And this is quite logical because there is no way young people can save up 25 to 50,000 euros in a short period of time and spend it on housing. On top of that, paying 1,500 euros per month on your place to stay is a lot of money, especially for singles. So they just decide to rent instead. With more and more people living in the major cities, renting prices are going up. And these prices eat away at the already small budgets of our younger generations, who are often single and living alone. If they then don't have the financial education and responsibility to save and invest every month, they will never really put enough money aside to take the step towards home ownership. It's a bit of a vicious circle, really. Higher housing prices means that less people will be able to buy them, so there will be more renters. More renters will mean higher rental prices. And higher rental prices will mean less budget for our younger generation. Only the previous generations have the financial stability to buy more properties. And they are obviously providing housing as rentals for the younger generation. This percentage of renters compared to owners will grow over time. We will see how fast it will go and where it will end. One great tip I can give you all is to save and invest the spare money you have. It will help you tremendously in the future. So don't spend it all, but think about your own future. Make your money work for you. If you want to think more about your financial future, you should really keep up with this channel and learn more about personal finance. You should start this journey by liking this video for the YouTube algorithm to make sure that YouTube shows this video to a broader audience. Also, don't forget to subscribe and invite some friends to the channel. We are closing up to 1000 subscribers and that's super awesome. If you want to watch more of my finance videos, I have selected a few especially for you. And you can start by clicking one of them right here. I thank you very much for watching and until next time.